Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today I'm going to cover um, one of the very basic ideas, which is that of simulations, and. Um, Using simulations you can do everything, that is you don't need any equations or mathematics, there's just one thing that you need to understand and that is simulations and using simulations you can replace a huge amount of econometric theory. So this can be a basis for doing econometric theory, it's much easier than the traditional approach in the sense that our basic concept is random variables. Ki Basically what we do is we generate random variables and we watch how they behave. We want to understand how um, a sequence of coin flips behave. So we generate a sequence of coin flips and then we look at their properties. This is very easy to do as opposed to deriving the theory which is very difficult. Now the thing is that this has only become possible recently and in our classes when the teacher wanted to show how the what were the properties of a random coin that he would start flipping coins it would take a very long time to do get a hundred flips and sometimes the behavior that we want to see emerges at 1000 flips or 10,000 flips so it's not possible to do so you could only make theory and therefore all of the statistical theory that you have in the books, it is not based on simulations because simulations were not possible to do until very recently. So now it is possible to actually rewrite the books and start from zero with simulations and if you start with simulations things are much easier to understand intuitively. The theory is very difficult to understand. Uh, in addition, <coughs> in the 70s and 80s when I was studying Bayesian econometrics. So Bayesian was it as at a dead end because the calculations that were needed for it theoretically were too hard to make. It was uh, you could write down the formula like this is what the theory says but you could not calculate the integrals that were required and so basically there was nothing to do. You could say so Bayesian theory says this is the formula for the answer but what is the answer you can cal find out because the formula is too difficult. Then in the 90s there was a revolution because basically we learned how to apply the simulation techniques to uh, evaluate the formulas and uh, so this was a method that is now known as the Gibbs sampler and it allowed a lot of Bayesian calculations which had been impossible before and it was all based on simulations. So now Bayesian uh, theory has a new life because now the calculations can be made by the computers and so uh, a lot of interesting work is going on in the Bayesian econometrics. But all of it depends, I am not going to start with advanced, I am going to start with the very simplest concept which is the first and fundamental principle that if you have an event, event is something like the coin comes up heads or I take a random person, I pick a random person from a population and it is a female or I pick a random person from a population and he is voting for Imran Khan. These are the kind of events that we are talking about. Now the thing is that um, this event has a probability. Probability is a theoretical concept that is one very important thing that Probability is unknown usually. If you pick a person at random from a population and check is this 
uh, voted for uh, PMLN, uh, you will find out yes or no, one or zero. Uh, then you pick another one. And now, what is the probability that of seeing a one? That depends on the total number of PMLN supporters and the proportion of these in the population and also your method of randomization. Usually you don't know these things. So, now suppose you pick instead of one person like this, you pick ten people at random and you find that three of them are voting for Imran Khan and um, seven of them are not. So, we just focus on one event. You can also do multiple events then. Some are PMLN, some are PPP and some are... Uh, but that's more complicated, so I'll focus on. And the techniques are not that different. They are quite similar actually. So we just focus on one that, okay, three people are voting for Imran Khan in the random sample of ten. So this is the observed frequency. This is something you can see and touch and calculate. 3 out of 10 in your observed sample. Now there is the hidden, unknown, unobserved <coughs> probability. What is the proportion of Imran Khan supporters in the true population? You don't even know the size of the true population and how many there are. So the basic uh, idea is that the observed frequency, the number that you can see, will match the number that you can't see. So you can guess that in the true population, the number of Imran Khan supporters is about 30 percent. Now, how much margin of an error do you have? That's something we can calculate. And else, uh, also, basically what happens is that as the sample size increases, the number converges. That is the key and <coughs> fundamental principle of simulation. Uh, that this is called the law of large numbers that if the sample size increases then the observed frequency will converge to the true unknown probability this depends on a number of assumptions but right now so basically what we do is we look at um, I mean the way this theorem is phrase is that you have a sequence of IID random variables. This IID is a very common abbreviation. It means independent and identically distributed. So first of all, each sample has to be independent. You take one random person, then you put him back, then you take another random person. So these all are if the population is the same, then, and, and also the first draw does not affect the second, you don't, then that's independence. And if the population is the same, then the distribution is the same, that is the chances, and, and uh, not only the population, but also the method of sampling you use has to be the same. Then everybody will have the same probability in the first trial and the same probability in the second trial. This is the key to the law of large numbers that you have to have independence and you have to have identical distributions. So with these then, you look at the first random variable, you draw a random variable, you look, look at the outcome. Who is this man? Is he supporting Imran Khan or not? If he is, then you record a one which is a success or the event occurred and if he is not then you record a zero, the event did not occur, you had a failure. So you end up with a sequence of zeros and ones like I have indicated in the middle of this slide, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, etc. And now you can count the proportion of ones here. And basically the proportion of ones should be close to the true unknown probability. Now what we are going to do is to demo this in Excel.
All right, now let us see. Does this have the in the data section usually? Data analysis is here, yes. Okay, so we are going to do a random number generation. I'm going to generate only one variable, but 1000 numbers from this. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> so, let's assume that the proportion of voters in the population is uh, uh, for Imran Khan is 25 percent. So, I'm going to put the p value equals to 0 0.25 and let's suppose that we are looking at a sample of size 10 voters only. So, we have 10 voters and the in the total population we have 25 percent people who are voting for uh, Imran Khan. So, now we are going to look at how these samples behave. Okay, so now this is the, <coughs> this is what the random sample will look like. In the first sample of 10 people, we had two people who were voting for Imran Khan. In the second sample, we had two people. In the third sample, we had four. In the fourth sample, we have zero. So now, you are getting an intuitive understanding of how sampling from a population works. Let's think that there is a total of 100,000 people in the population and there are 25,000 people who are supporters of Imran Khan. So this is the setup, this is the population. Actually these numbers are not known usually to the experimenter. So now he takes a random sample of 10. What will he see? So the outcome is going to be random. This is one of the key things. This requires training in thinking to be understand how random variables behave because unlike the concepts that you are familiar with like fractions and numbers which stay fixed, the random sample changes. So you have to have the when you say that this is a random variable, it means that it is never going to be the same. So then you have to look at the behavior of the random variable. So here we are looking at the behavior of a random sample of 10 observations from a population in which there are 25 percent voters for Imran Khan. So, you see in, in two of the first two samples are pretty good in the sense that they are representative, they show the population. Uh, it's 25 percent, 25 percent can never be shown exactly in a sample of size 10, but 2 is a, 2 shows 20 percent when the reality is 25 percent. The third sample is a little bit misleading, it suggests that there is a 40 percent support for when in fact there is only 25 percent. This can happen by chance because your random variable is random. The fourth sample is very misleading. It says that there is no support for Imran Khan. And the third one is okay. So basically we have mostly threes and twos which is good. And uh, because those two are representative, ones are coming up and fours are also coming up everyone's hand. Here is a one extreme value, five. It is very unusual. But we have 50 percent also. So. Um, 
your samples can be very misleading here is a 5 again 6 so if you take more and more um, random samples you get more and more variation now what I want to show is that the average value of this uh, these random variables is going to converge to the true probability which is uh, 50% uh, 25% so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to write equals average from dollar e dollar one oops this again dollar e dollar one two e ten ये 2.2 आया यहाँ पे नोट रिमेम्बर दैट इट्स उप्स अच्छा ठीक है 2.5 शुड बी द एवरेज तो नाउ व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इस टू स्प्रेड दिस डाउन तो ये एवरेज बदलता जाता है नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू मेक अ ग्राफ ऑफ दिस You see how this behaves, that uh, it starts out below starts below 2.5 and it fluctuates a lot and it always remains above 2.5 which is the actual limiting value 1000 tak bhi but you can also see convergence that it is getting closer to 2.5 so in very large samples the random variable, the averages of the random variable converge to the true probabilities. So, um, actually this result is a bit surprising because of the memoryless property. You see, um, suppose that you have made a thousand trials like you have here and the number is at 2.55 suppose we know what it is actually we can calculate so it's higher so now we are saying that as we keep taking more and more trials the number will converge to 2.5 so the question is since these trials are independent how does the next trial know that I should go down in order to converge? So because of the p-values? Because of what? P-values. No, the, what do you mean p-value? Mm -hmm. <coughs> what to have but the, every trial is completely independent and is only based on Yes. Yes, but the thing is that uh, independent, uh, but now you see the first thousand were above. So now the number has to be pushed down. So how? Will, but but the but the later trials don't know what happened on the first uh, thousand trials. How do they know that we have to push it down and if it's below then we have to push it up and there is no memory in the process.
there is a, a lecture on this in one of my course, earlier courses. But basically, we think that the law of large numbers work by balancing, which means that if you have an excess at one point, then you uh, have an uh, undersupply later, so that the two things balance. But that is not how the law of large number works. Instead, the law of large number works by what is called swamping. Swamping is that so much information comes in that the first part becomes irrelevant. See, this is 1000. In the next 10,000 trials, suppose you have a balance, 5,000 and 5, or, or, or 25,000 and 75,000 in the next 100,000. So, now what happened in the first thousand will not make any difference in the sense that it can go from 25,000 to 26 or 25 to 24, it still will be only 1% uh, difference. So, whether all of them were heads or whether all of them were tails, it will not make any difference because the first thousand is only a small number and the 100,000 is a very big number. So basically the evidence becomes overwhelming. You can ignore what happened in the first thousand trials because there is so much more data that is coming in. That's what happens. That Infinity is a very large number. So even if things get messed up in the first thousand trials, you have millions and millions of trials to go and you can eventually fix what happened because it doesn't matter what happened because a finite number is always small when you have a very large number that remains. So that's the, how it works. It doesn't work by balancing. There is no memory. <clears throat> so, basically we have the idea that convergence occurs to the probability for any event. The repeat, in repeated trials, the probability of seeing that event will converge to the uh, probability of that event. Yeah. Say a question that uh, say simulations are done to, to get the convergence and to get closer to the true population of the probability 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 of the or say that, okay, in my population of 100,000, I want to find out who will win the next election. So what is the size of the sample that I need in order to get a small error? That is the next question, in fact, we are going to study. So what is the error of approximation? So basically what we are saying is that as the sample size increases, the error of approximation will become smaller. But how small is it? So this is basically what the standard error tells us. The variance of the um, sum of the random variables or the average is p times 1 minus p over n where p is the probability of the event. So here 25 percent times 75 percent divided by the sample size. And the standard error is the square root of that. And basically, you can say that the observed frequency minus the probability will be less than one standard error about 66% of the time. It will be less, the difference will be less than two standard errors about 95% of the time. And uh, so on. So basically, the standard error is a measure of how far you are off. And basically what we use is plus or minus two standard errors as our 95% confidence interval. So, we can go back to this and ask Okay, I'm going to put the standard error bound here. Okay. 
square root of zero point two five. Oh, okay. Seven five slash your row you have this just gives you the ten. This is the row number. So this is the sample size also, which is the n. So here you see the standard error is one uh, zero point one three seven. And now I have generated the standard error. So now this is the true value 0 0.25 plus one standard error. Now I'm going to just replicate that and then I want to add this onto this graph. Mm -hmm. I think this is okay. Hmm, yes, anyway. Should we skip a second? Oh, I made a mistake in this one. The 0.25 was not the true value. It was 2.5, because I had to do it. Okay, now this So I am trying to draw the range. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Wo red line you have that represents a one standard error margin around the true value, and basically with 66 percent probability you are. Um, Observation should be within this two standard error. If we are making, it will uh, contain the 
true proportion with 95 percent probability. इसको हम टू टाइम्स कर देते हैं ताकि स्टैंडर्ड एरर ये देखो अब टू किया तो इट्स नाउ मैचिंग मोर क्लोजली यानी द ब्लू लाइन इज फॉलिंग विद इन दिस मोर ऑफ एंड पहले तो थोड़ा सा बाहर थी अब जो है वो ऑलमोस्ट मैच है तो फिर भी इट्स लिल बिट एंड यूजल मगर एंड में ज़रा अंदर आ रही है और एक्चुअली इसमें भी यही बात है कि नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंट इज़ अ लॉन्ग रन अभी वन थाउजेंड हुआ है जब आगे जाएंगे 2000 तक तो काफ़ी ज़्यादा मामला काबू में आ जाएगा तो बेसिकली यू कैन ड्रा द अदर साइड विच विल बी सिमेट्रिक ऑन द अदर साइड ऑफ 2.5 पॉइंट फाइव यू कैन सी दैट द बैंड ऑफ एरर इज बिकमिंग स्मॉलर एंड दियर इफ यू लुक एट द थाउजेंड नंबर द अपर वैल्यू इज टू पॉइंट फाइव टू सेवन इट मीन्स के एंड एंड एक्चुअली द ऑब्जर्वेशन वॉज फाइव थ्री एट सो बेसिकली यानी द एरर इज नाउ इन द सेकेंड डेसेमल प्लेस नॉट इन द फर्स्ट डेसेमल प्लेस सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू यूज सिमुलेशन टू कैलकुलेट प्रॉबिलिटीज यू कैन से यू कैन सी वट इज द सैम्पल साइज दैट यू नीड दैट इन ऑर्डर टू गेट accurate uh, count of the population now uh the thing that i want to show you next is the key to ye pehli concept thi the first concept is that if you take any event and you look at how often it happens the probability of that event the observed frequency of that event converges to the probability of that event actually i didn't demonstrate that kyunki wo zeros and ones se karna hota hai actually i should have done that I have skipped one step in the middle. Um, let me see. We go back and do that again, so that we have. Okay, so we're going to generate a binomial, but only one trial that way. This won't be confusing. And now, let's look at some number like so we have 72% probability of success the event has probability 72% and now i'm going to generate 1000 trials here we go now we have 1 and 0 for each event so um again we can i start at 10 it could this thing can be started at um, any number but the thing is that initially it fluctuates very heavily like at the first point the probability of the event is 100% and the second point it is 50% and at the second it's 66% so it starts to stabilize uh so i'll start and use the same thing average Okay. 
So here you can see that the fluctuation is fairly heavy initially and then it stabilizes closer to 72 percent. We can actually look at the numbers. Huh? It's 0.725. This is the thousandth value. We are at thousand. So the value is 72.5. Yani 0 0.725. It never becomes exactly equal. It's always different. Uh, but it becomes closer and closer. And so this is the so the observed frequency fluctuates but it keeps coming closer and how close well that's the what the other calculation shows us the standard error So now we can say uh, 0 0.72, I'm going to put minus 2 standard errors, 2 star uh, SQRT, the length is 0 0.72 star, what is the 1 minus P? 0 0.28 star, oh no, not star, I want to divide this by rho. Okay. Ah, achha, yehi mein kya rata, yehi kya gaya. Equal rai gaya. So now I want to actually uh, copy this over. Now instead of minus, I'm going to put plus here. So this is the band. Okay, so. Oh, okay, so this is the picture. <coughs> It shows the green line is the upper band of two standard errors and the red line is the lower band of two standard errors. And the blue line remains within this entirely this time. It need not. It can go outside. You can 95 percent confidence in bands. Mein. So, but in this particular case, the band you see, 72 percent is the true value. 69.1 percent, if you look at the bottom, 69.1 percent is the bottom uh, band and 74.8 percent is the upper band. So, in 1000 trials, this is the range of accuracy that you will be getting up to plus or minus two standard errors. So, basically the probabilities, the observed frequency converges to the true probability and as the n increases, <coughs> the accuracy increases. <coughs> but um, basically, 1 over square root of n goes to 0 very slowly. So, <coughs> as you increase the sample size, the gain in accuracy is not proportional, it's actually quite slow. And if you quadruple the sample size, you will halve the error. Okay. It's basically going at the square root rate. So, 
If you go <coughs> to 1 over 4 n, that's 4 times the sample size, the square root of that will be 2 times the square root of n. So, you will actually um, reduce the error by 1 half. So, in order to reduce the error by 1 half, you have to quadruple the sample size. So, it means that a lot of, uh, you, need, you need very big samples to get very great accuracy. <coughs> On the other hand, you can get enough accuracy for your purpose at very small samples. In America, when they are doing <coughs> random sampling to find out who is going to win the presidential elections, they use samples of about size 3000 only. Uh, so, 3000 is uh, basically if suppose you have 50 percent probability. <coughs> So then it will be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, so that's 0 0.25 divided by 3000. So <coughs> the standard error would be equals square root of 0 0.25 slash 3000 is <coughs> about 0 0.009 which is 1 percent. So, <coughs> basically, <coughs> you will have accuracy to within plus or minus 2 percent if you look at two standard errors for the election count at a sample of size 3000. So, within plus or minus 2 percent, if the, if the race is not really very close, you should be able to, and if, if one of the candidates has 55 percent of the vote and the other has 45 percent, then the separation is about 10 percent. And with the <coughs> accuracy of 2 percent, you will be able to tell correctly what is the, who is going to win. But if the race is very close, if you are, I mean if one candidate is 49 percent and the other has 51 percent, then you will not be able to get a good answer by a sample of size 3000. <coughs> so, so, now the next concept is basically, now we come back to <coughs> what I was doing first, I was hurrying to the second concept without actually having covered the first one. So now let us look at what is going on here. I am going to delete this. <coughs> now, what I want to show you is uh, something quite different. Now, let us see. Okay. First, I want to look at the probabilities. Delete ka option to nahi nazar aara, magar cut aara hai which will do the same thing. <coughs> Chalo. Now, we look at uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is the data that we have on the binomial 10. Um, with 25 percent success probability. So, I am just going to calculate the binomial probabilities first. Okay, the number is going to be D1, uh, the number of trials is 10, the probability is 0 0.25, and I don't want the cumulative. 
so here it is see kya ho gaya yahan tak kyun chala gaya ye <coughs> अच्छा तो ये ट्रू प्रॉबिलिटीज हैं वो ये है जीरो के जीरो पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट वन हैज एन एटीन परसेंट प्रॉबिलिटी टू हैज ए ट्वेंटी एट परसेंट थ्री हैज ए ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट फोर हैज ए फोर्टीन परसेंट एंड सो ऑन सो बेसिकली डू यू थिंक ये हमारे वन थाउजेंड ट्रायल्स हैं Will there be a seven in these numbers? We already saw a six, है ना? Will there be a seven? क्या हुआ? What is the probability of a seven? क्या हुआ? Point zero zero three. What is that? Not three percent. Sorry. Huh? Zero point three percent. It's three in one thousand, right? So I have a trial of one thousand observations. Will there be a seven in this? Three sevens. Kya There should be around three sevens exactly. So in this there will be a seven. Let's look at this. What about the eight? Will there be an eight in this? हो सकता है. It's actually three in ten thousand, which is uh, zero point four actually. It's zero point four in a thousand, half a percent. यानि के um, in one thousand you should see about half uh, the time the value eight. So there is a fifty-fifty chance that there will be an eight. So what I am going to do is look at max because it's hard to a one to a one thousand. So what is it? Eight. So there was an eight in this because <coughs> so half percent chance again. If I do another thousand, it might not go to eight. And about actually in every other sample, I will see an eight. What about nine? Will you see a nine in this? No nines. Ah, you already know. Okay, okay. Max is eight. There is no nine because the probability is too low. Now it's uh, one in uh, hundred thousand. Ki baat ho rahi. Two, two in a hundred, three in hundred thousand. So if I took a sample of a hundred thousand, I would see an eight in it too. I would see two of them. बट इन दिस सैम्पल इट वुड बी वेरी लो अगर मैं कई वन थाउजेंड के सैम्पल्स लूँ तो एवेंचुअली आई विल ऑल्सो सी नाइन बट एट दिस पॉइंट देर इज नो ना वट आई वॉन्ट टू शो इज दैट दी फॉर ईच आउटकम दी नंबर ऑफ आउटकम्स इज अबाउट द सेम एज द प्रॉबिलिटी सो इक्वल्स काउंट प्रज Value should be this one, comma. इसमें array होती है इसको जरा देखते हैं क्या हुआ Count F है Let me see. Counts the number of cells in a range that contain number value वन और ठीक है और ये दूसरे में क्या है Um, okay, let me see. Can we get help on this function?
ओ अच्छा ये तो फालतू चीज़ आई मीन दिस डजेंट वर्क इन द वे दैट आई थॉट इट इट काउंट एफ है काउंट एफ अच्छा सही है बहुत अच्छा तो पहले तो हमें रेंज देनी है तो रेंज हम देते हैं इसको डॉलर ए डॉलर वन टू डॉलर ए डॉलर वन थाउजेंड ये हो गई इसके बाद क्राइटेरिया कोट इक्वल जीरो होता है शायद आई वॉन्टेड टू डू समथिंग फैंसी मगर चलो ये ट्राई करते हैं फिलहाल हाँ ठीक है तो दिस इज नॉट सो गुड मगर चलो अभी मुझे वो याद नहीं है इसको कैसे करते हैं अच्छा तो ये जो है दाउंट इज फिफ्टी फोर आउट ऑफ थाउजेंड विच इज अ मैच टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव सिक्स है ना दैट इज द ट्रू प्रॉबिलिटी ऑब्जर्व इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव फोर अच्छा अब यहाँ पे मैंने असल में चूंकि जीरो डाल दिया इसलिए ये सही नहीं आ रहा है आई वॉज प्लानिंग टू पुट अ रेफरेंस टू द सेल मगर आई एम नॉट श्योर इट विल वर्क इक्वल्स वन चलो इसको ऐसे ही करते हैं फिलहाल तो ये 161 हो गया और यहां पे 187 है तो 161 और 187 में थोड़ा फर्क तो है मगर मैच भी है थोड़ा दिस इज एग्जैक्टली वर्ड द यानी 1000 थाउजेंड ट्रायल्स की हमने बाइनोमियल के एवरी वन ऑफ दीज 11 आउटकम्स हैज सम प्रॉबिलिटी नाउ वी लुकिंग फॉर द मैच बिटवीन दी ऑब्जर्व फ्रीक्वेंसी and the theoretical probability and we are seeing that there is a fairly good match isko main agar equal 0 ke bajaye equals d3 kar do pata nahi kya hota hai nahi d3 nahi hota yahan pe there is a way indirect function hota hai wo koi जिससे हो जाता है मगर चलो पैदल तरीके से करते हैं All right so basically you can see that kya hua main nahi samjha kya keh raha hu hmm एग्जैक्टली वन फोर्टी फाइव इन वन थाउजेंड ये अच्छा यानी एग्जैक्ट मैच है एक्चुअली इट्स वन फोर्टी सिक्स जो थ्योरेटिकल है और ऑब्जर्व वन फोर्टी फाइव है इट्स अ गुड मैच मगर यानी थ्योरी दस जस्ट एक्सीडेंट यानी इट्स नॉट सपोज टू मैच दैट वेल इनफैक्ट जो रेंज ऑफ एरर है वो भी हम यहाँ पर लिख सकते हैं एंड दैट्स गोइंग टू बी कम फ्राम पी मन इज इनफैक्ट दैट्स वट आई एम गोइंग टू डू सो let me write that the range of error is uh 
equals square root of p times parenthesis one minus p slash one thousand. इसको 1000 से मल्टीप्लाई करके सोचो 7, 12, 14, अगेन दिस इज 14, ओके सो दिस इज टेलिंग यू द स्टैंडर्ड एर अबाउट हाउ मच कैन योर नंबर डिविएट फ्रॉम द ट्रू तो ये 54 जो है, it is within plus or minus seven. That's one standard error of the true 56. So it is that is way. That is the way. Or फिर ये 161 should be within plus or minus 12. So if you add 12 to 161, so you get 173. That's still not. So 66 percent probability होती है इसकी one standard error की. अगर हम two standard errors चले जाएँ 24, तो फिर you get to you just barely get 187 is actually a little bit more than two standard errors away. So this is an unusually large difference. इतना ज़्यादा नहीं होना चाहिए, मगर five percent probability है, हो सकता है। तो इस तरह से you see that the histogram that we draw This is uh, the standard error. This is the standard error square root of p. So this means that the difference between 0.054 and 0.056 should be within plus or minus one standard error uh, with 66 percent probability. It should be within plus or minus two standard errors with 95 percent probability. And it should be within plus or minus three standard errors with 99.9 percent .9 probability. So, this tells you about how much error you can make. But this is yani, probabilistic thinking. Yani, deterministic, mein you can say it's within plus or minus x. But as you increase the error, the probability of that error goes lower. But you never get to a certain statement that it's 100 percent sure. If we say it's within plus or minus 66 percent, then we can say that this is often true. If it goes to plus or minus 95 percent, we can say that 19 times out of 20, this this will be true. Agar one time out of 20, it will be false. And if you want to go to three standard errors, then you can say one time only in 1,000, this will be false. Magar still, it's not sure. One in thousand, it can go wrong. <coughs> so, uh, this is the standard. Asal mein do scales pe hum kaam kar rahe. Ek to thousand times this may numbers are easy to see or a fractional scale this is in divided by thousand so it's easier to see the numbers is lay minus go multiply by thousand here the end it's easy to see what's happening so actually that's the basic lesson that the histogram the observed histogram converges to the theoretical histogram that is the key message of this lecture and also the rate of convergence is known as the sample size increases you can tell how much errors there will be and there is a control and then you can choose the end that you need to get the accuracy that you want. This is the most basic theorem about sampling and this is how we use random samples to calculate random variables. Ke Aksar, we are in a situation where the true probability is not known, but we can get a random sample and then from that random sample we can try to calculate what is the true probability and uh, that calculation will have some error in it. How much that error is we can also calculate, but all of these calculations are approximate. 
none of them are hundred percent accurate hundred percent of the time so i think i'll stop here the lecture is written up for you so it has all of, more, more details than i have provided here <coughs> but now if you read it then hopefully you will be able to see what i am trying to teach in this lecture Okay, so I'll stop this here.